Hannah was the most loving and fun person you would ever meet. She was always there if you've ever needed someone to talk to. She was always there to make you smile and laugh. She'd light up the room. Hannah was really funny. She was, well, beautiful for one. Not just physically, but on the inside, she'd do anything for anybody. She was kind and she was funny and everything that you wanted in a friend, she was. She had a really contagious laugh. She was kind and she was giving and she would do anything to make anybody laugh. She was a very funny girl. Loved people, she loved her friends. <sighs> she loved life. My name is Gail Thorne and Hannah is my daughter. Hannah was a shy <laughs> child at first, <laughs> but she soon grew out of that. Hannah was very funny, always carrying on, always making a joke. Since the day I was born, she has been by my side. She has been an older sister to me. Wherever we would go, people would always ask us, are you guys related? Are you guys twins? Because we look so much alike. So we spent hours together, days together. We always had pool parties. If not, we were camping in her garden, in her tent, or we were out on our bikes. Well, Hannah was essentially my very first best friend. Um, really close all through childhood and stuff like that. I'd always go out and spend many Christmases and summers together for a month at a time. Um, growing up in this community, it was pretty sweet. Everybody got to know pretty, everybody pretty well. Whenever we get ready to go somewhere, I sit and look at her and she'd be like getting ready, put her weave in as she called it, her hair extension. She wouldn't go anywhere without her hair extensions. Getting ready to put her makeup on and she'd be singing into her straightener or and she was always, she was just the life of the party wherever she went. It's just, she was the light of my life, honestly. I don't think there was any point in time where anybody was around her and you could be not in a mood other than happy. No, yeah. Like, she, was... she made everybody so happy all she the time. Like, special. she was so goofy and silly and just like... Well, one day we were hiking. We went to do the Briggs Lighthouse hike and we got over there, we found it, and then we didn't realize how long of a hike it was. So we started going and halfway up, she started huffing and puffing. She goes, are we there yet? I'm like, Hannah, I heard that this is like a three hour hike. I don't think we're getting to the lighthouse. So we got up top to like the top of the, one of the mountains, like say, that you climb to. And she goes, wait, Kylie. I goes, watch, she goes, let me take a picture. And you could just see the lighthouse down over the cliff. She goes, she took a picture of the lighthouse. She goes, that's good enough for me. We're turning around, going back. On the way back, she looked at me. She goes, wanna go to McDonald's? I goes, yeah. So we went to McDonald's after and that's yeah. We never did finish that hike. <laughs> um, she was funny and nice and kind. Well, she loved her music and, and her animals. Animals she loved. She did everything her cats, dress them up, take them out into the carriage and yeah, she she loved her animals. She was accepted into a, a two-year program at the College of the North. She had just got the keys to her apartment two days prior to that and had parties planned from right to December. <laughs> we were really super excited to go move into our apartment. Like, that was our number one key. We were supposed to move in July 1st, but my mom was gone away. So we were just waiting for my mom to get back so we could go and sign the lease and get our key and finally have a night in there together, the three of us. <laughs>
One of my most exciting things was for her to come in and move to town finally and I could get my hands on her for myself and take her out and show her around. But uh, of course, all that came to a, a quick end. Uh, Hannah was working July 7, 2016 at an art gallery that uh, I was part of and uh, she was our student for that summer. It was her fourth day of the job. And myself and my husband were going on a salmon hunting trip. It was a Thursday, so we got everything ready, had a new car for her, registered it that morning. I uh, drove her to work because the process for the car wasn't ready. Her grandmother was gonna pick her up, so we left. I talked to her at five o'clock that night um, before supper to let me know that her grandmother was there and she was closing the store. I met my wife and my friends at work that evening to go off on a salmon fishing trip. And we stopped in Clarenville for supper. Well, I was texting with Hannah all day, most like say the usual for us. And we were planning to go to St. John's, me and her other friend Hottie, to get watch a movie. I was at the house and I was texting with her and she said that her name was picking her up and then we would meet her here. So she was texting me the whole way home. I had gotten off of work and I was meeting Hannah here. And after not hearing from her for a while, I got a little concerned, you know. So I opened her front patio door to see if I could hear the car coming in the road. And I could hear all these sirens, ambulance, and I instantly just had a gut feeling I had to go, something was wrong. We had a group chat, all of us girls, and one of the girls texted, was like, oh, hope everyone's okay or whatever, bad accident. Everybody texted back besides Hannah. I had missed calls from Hadi, her other best friend, and she was saying, don't, and I called her back, and she said, I don't want to like, say make you scared or anything, but I haven't heard from Hannah. I jumped in my car, and I called her phone, and I went across the New Harbor Barrens and someone picked up the phone and I was saying, Hannah, like, where are you? And a lady picked up and she was like, oh, like, she can't talk right now, but she can call you later. And I remember pulling up to the man that was there and I called him by name, I knew who he was, and I was like, I'm like, I need to know, I need to know if it's her. And he was like, turn around. He was like, I can't tell you. I turned around because it's bad. And I could see it all in front of me. And I turned around. I knew it wasn't best for me to be there. So I turned around and I came back here and I waited. it. We got a phone call from a family member telling us about the crash and that Hannah, uh, Hannah was dead. And uh, Levi's mother, Hannah's grandmother, was really beat up in really bad shape. So we immediately turned around and uh, came home. All I was told that I was to come home. When I saw it, and I called a couple of my friends, and then when I came back inside, I heard my mom say on the phone, how do I tell her? And then I was like, tell me what? My first instinct that was that she was just hurt, that we would have to go say. It was, I had a feeling it was her but not once in my head that I felt that she was killed. So when my, mom, when my mom told me, I dropped. Myself and my sister fell to the floor and I don't remember much after that. We managed to track down an RCMP and they told us that they were taking her to Carbonier Hospital. And I immediately told them that I wanted to see her and that we were on our way. So we left our house, we got to the New Harbor Barrens and the road was completely blocked off. They wouldn't let us, we identified ourselves. They wouldn't let us go that way. We ended up having to go all the way down to Heart's Content and around that way to Carbonair. By the time we got there, they had taken her to the coroner's office in St. John's and I was very upset that that had happened. So we went into the hospital and there was our CMP there standing over 
the man that killed Hannah. And we asked to speak to them. They told us to go back out and that they would come for us when we were, when they were ready. The police had called us at that point and then told us the real story, that there had been street racing involved and one car had left the scene. Well, today in the Harbor Grace courtroom, we learned exactly what happened in the moments leading up to the crash that killed 18 year old Hannah Thorne. Brian King, who pleaded guilty to street racing causing death, sat quietly as Thorne's family listened to the painful details. It started here in Greens Harbor around 5 o'clock on July 7, 2016, and continued for nearly 10 kilometers speeding until tragedy struck right here. A no passing zone. At the crest of a small hill, Mercer passed another vehicle and pulled back into his lane. King tried to do the same, but didn't have time. Investigators believe King's truck was traveling at 130 kilometers per hour when it smashed into the small car. And according to one witness, his first concern was for his own future, reportedly saying, she's dead, my life is effed. So we learned that and we ended up, I just couldn't carry on to town anymore. I was totally exhausted by this time. It was at least eight o'clock and I just decided that I, I just need to go home. And uh, so that's what we did. We just came home. <laughs> My mom just, you know, called me hysterical and said, Hannah's gone. And I literally dropped the phone from my hands and fell to the floor and couldn't believe it. Still can't believe it. Like they say, uh, as the days go, it gets easier, but I think it's honestly getting harder because it just means that I'm realizing I'll never see her again, ever. <laughs> it's tough. I didn't believe it for a second. And then I had a massive anxiety attack. I was crying uncontrollably for hours. We cope the only way we really know how, and that's to lean on our friends and our family. Um, I find it healing to come here and spend time with Gail and Levi and Cody. You know, I've lost both of my parents, but uh, it's not as painful as uh, losing my daughter. And the way that she was, Hannah was a very vibrant, healthy girl and because of somebody's neglect and stupidity, she's dead. Friends and family of Hannah Thorne gathered in a Harbor Grace courtroom today to address a man charged with causing her death. At least 30 of Hannah Thorne's friends and family were here today, most of them wearing purple, her favorite color, and wearing pins bearing the 18-year-old's photo. They were here for the sentencing hearing of Brian King. The 32-year-old pleaded guilty earlier this fall to dangerous driving causing bodily harm and street racing causing death. I don't think any amount of time would compare to losing Hannah. It's just like after he gets out of jail, he can move on with the rest of his life, but Hannah's never coming back. King said he couldn't imagine what the Thorne family has endured and hopes his sentence brings some sort of justice and closure. Hannah's mother, Gail, chose not to listen to King's apology and left the courtroom. I had never cried like that in a courtroom, ever, you know what I mean? And I had never been in, I was relatively new to the court beat, I guess you could say. And because um, it was happening in Harbor Grace and we didn't have a court reporter to go out there, I was kind of thrust into it. So I, I, I never cried like that. I can't imagine being there, like I can't imagine being Hannah's grandmother, like the matriarch of the family and the baby of the family. And I don't know, I don't know if Gertie, you know, saw her granddaughter pass away, but I think that was a big part of it, a really big part, because like no grandmother, no mother, no father should ever have to say goodbye to their child and definitely not a grandparent. So that, that really stuck with me too. And it took so long for her to get better, so. So we went into the room and sat down. I, I 
couldn't believe the state she was in, like to see an 80 year old woman so beat up as she was. And um, it was very important for Gertie to tell us what happened. And the, the very first thing she said it wasn't my fault. We already knew that it wasn't her fault. And then she went on to say that she tried to ditch the car, but there was no time. And um, once all the noise stopped and the car stopped, she knew that Hannah was dead right away. She knew by her color and because she was cold. And she just held her hand and started to cry. And uh, one of the witnesses came to see um, if there was anything that they could do. And all her concern was Hannah and that she was cold. And the old fella took his sweater off and wrapped it around and just stayed there until the RCMP and first responders came. I was kind of hoping that Hannah didn't know what was going on, that she was busy texting and that she didn't really see, but she did. Gertie heard her call out, oh my God, man. And then the crash happened. Gertie remembers seeing the bottom of the truck going completely over them. She'd talk about it daily. She never did get over it. I know even though she passed with unrelated um, injuries to the crash, I know Gertie died of a broken heart. I know that. The family, the Mercer family and the King family, now I don't know if it was their parents or friends of theirs, or I can't say if it was someone who was directly connected to both of these people, but I know that opioid addiction was like a major concern for their families. And they, they wanted to see the Mercer and King get help. I can't remember if both of them had addiction issues or one of them, but I remember it's, it's, not, it's not just distracted driving, but there's also an opioid crisis that's playing into this as well. They uh, got a warrant after to remove the computer from the car and what they had seen. And there were 12 used syringes in his truck at the time. Again, there were so many um, things that were so wrong um, after the uh, collision happened, really upset me that this man was able to get up the next day and drive a vehicle, that there was nothing in place to have his license suspended for, there was just nothing in place. It still, still makes my palms sweat, like really, I can't even imagine. Since I, I think it was King. He, his license was taken from him after all, but it wasn't as a result of him being charged with street racing. Seven weeks later, and he wasn't paying his insurance. So the DMV, or driver motor, motor vehicle registration ended up taking it, not, not the police. And I know that that was something that, that Gail said that you know, she was really convinced to fight about, right? She really wanted to push for changes on that front. Um, I always find Gail's resilience absolutely incredible. She is by far the strongest person that I know. I admire her strength through everything. And I think that her, I, I'm not really sure, but I think that maybe this is her way of coping through things, is to try and drive change and try and not let Hannah die in vain and um, make her road safer so we can save someone else's Hannah. And if we save someone else's Hannah, that's, that's the goal. That's all we can ask for. The thing that's good that comes out of it is the Stand for Hannah Foundation so that, you know, they can lobby for changes to things that need to be changed. So we started a foundation called Stand for Hannah Foundation. I try to focus my time on that stand is standing together against negligent driving. And uh, we've been quite successful. The foundation is one of, we knew right away we were gonna start a foundation. I knew as soon as, you know, very next day, that I said, we're starting a foundation. And uh, so we did. But our, my main goal is to keep Hannah's memory alive and not to forget how she was killed. She was once a person here on this earth, uh, taken so tragically. Um, I can remember a couple days after Hannah had passed, I went to the school, they had a little memorial there for all the public and the friends and people that she went to school with. And I can remember being so overwhelmed by how many people were in that gym. It was flooded with people who were all grieving and that has continued ever since. 
um, every fundraiser that they've had, they've always had incredible support. And like I said today, that is exactly what drives and enacts change and that's exactly what motivates the Stan Co Nation and keeps everything going. Through fundraising, the communities have, well, I can't thank them enough. And again, it's, you know, always the same people. It's the same people over and over. Every time we have, it's the same people coming forward and giving us our money so we can continue on with our fundraiser, our foundation. The foundation would never be where it is no. without community support. Like, <clears throat> we're so lucky to have gotten. Everyone just wanted to help in any way that they could. Whether that be, you know, volunteering um, with the foundation, going up to the school, and speaking at assemblies, volunteer things like that. Everyone just wanted to help in some way. Well, what we're having here tonight is a fundraiser uh, volunteered by John Sheen, a comedy night. I, I was approached uh, when it was first starting, and uh, you know, it just struck a chord, I guess. Maybe, maybe the fact that I got a young daughter myself. Uh, you know, so teenagers, I got two teenagers that are driving around now. Uh, so it's just like, and being with the fire department for 10 years and being on uh, different scenes, I think this kind of just clicked. <laughs> and my normally very intelligent girlfriend goes, I didn't know we had woodpeckers around here. <laughs> We've only had one major fundraiser. Um, which we were very successful at. So this is really just our second big fundraiser. And um, all the money uh, earned will go towards foundation. Uh, right now we're developing the website and hope to use some of those funds towards that. <laughs> Between our foundation and the adv advocacy, we've done the government really jumped on board and they know themselves that the tra tra Highway Traffic Act was a total mess. So that's one thing that I'm very proud of. Street racing is another new, a new uh, offense that there's not that many uh, uh, cases of, of street driving. And uh, I think Hannah's case is the first, first one here in Newfoundland that were um, um, charged and found guilty of street racing. Well, you know, I doubt that there is anyone in this province who hasn't been affected by a motor vehicle accident. And as the minister responsible for the Highway Traffic Act, every time that I consider changes to legislation, I think about Gail Thorne, and Gail's family, and the senseless loss and pain and suffering that they've had to go through because of the death of Hannah. Uh, I've visited the memorial site a number of times, and uh, you know I know that Gail has been an extremely strong advocate uh, to, to prevent the senseless death of Hannah and future deaths you know, similar to what happened to Hannah. And Stand for Hannah uh, has had a great impact uh, on government as a whole. Uh, stunting, there was never anything in place um, stunting and now there is there is a law with stunting that you will lose your license for several days your car will be impound and very pleased that they got somebody last week and exactly that happened uh, this November uh, November 2017 uh, they sent us an invitation come into the House of Assembly that they had uh, worked on some pieces that were uh, affected, you know, Hannah's situation. It was a very emotional day in the House of Assembly, the day that we introduced changes to the Highway Traffic Act. Hannah's family were sitting up above and they were watching, and I have to say that it had a profound effect on me, their presence, and the fact that, you know, I felt like just jumping up and clapping that we had gotten this through, and, uh, you know, so to be able to do that, it feels like Hannah's death wasn't senseless after all. So we, in fact, have done something here. You know, Stand for Hannah have advocated, they have effected change with legislation. They are going to do whatever they can do to ensure 
that somebody else doesn't die the way Hannah died. I was blown away by the amount of pieces that they changed. Like, I couldn't believe it. Bill, Bill 27 is the name, and there's quite a few uh, added of strengthening policies, adding legislation, and we're very pleased with the changes that we've made so far with the foundation. So, I mean, I don't know if it's a coincidence that I am the member of the House of Assembly for the District of Placentia St. Mary's, and that's where Gail lives. That's Hannah's home, you know, that's her district. Uh, and the fact that I'm also the Minister of Service and L and the Minister responsible for the Highway Traffic Act. I'm the individual who, who brings this piece of legislation through the House of Assembly while Hannah's family is in the House. And so um, all that com compounds itself and it just has, a, has an effect on me as a minister. But I just find, like, is it coincidental or you know, is it meant to be? Why is um, the color purple the, the, the color of choice? Uh, Hannah's favorite color was purple, and uh, she actually had just purchased, she wore lipstick every day. She just never left the house without her lips. And she had just had purchased a purple lipstick, and she loved it. I remember um, when I was texting Hannah that day waiting for her to come home, she we were obviously talking about what we were going to wear. She wasn't driving, so it was fine. We were texting. And um, she would comment that she was going to wear this purple lipstick she had bought because she paid enough money for it and she needed to get her wear in. Because I paid enough for it, I got to wear it. Because I paid too much for it. <laughs> so we just choose purple. That was her favorite color. And uh, we just went with that. And that is exactly our goal, is to keep Hannah's memory alive. And I don't believe that Hannah was here for 18 years and then have her life ended like that. There has to be more of her than that. So our next, uh, I hate to call it an event, but uh, our next date is July 7th. It'll be two years that Hannah has been killed. Today we planted flowers in her memory and unveiled some concrete benches in memory of our family members who have passed before. Um, this is to honor Hannah's memory. It's a hard thing to, I can't say celebrate, but uh, we, have to, we have to honor her and as hard as it is, we still have to do it. We've had uh, first responders from Bay Roberts and, uh, or sorry, Spaniards Bay Volunteer Fire Department and from our, our Seaside Volunteer Fire Department in South Dildo. They both responded uh, to the call uh, the day Hannah was killed and uh, we just can't thank them enough for what they do. There should have been more to her life than the short 18 years that she's had. So we'll continue to honor Hannah's best we can. And every year we'll come here, plant flowers in her memory. We're having lanterns shut off tonight in memory. We did that last year too. And we also did it like a few days after the accident happened at Anderson's Cove and it was really nice. We come, usually just come back to Gail's and we have, well, we had barbecue this year. This year we're having pizza and I think she got soup and chili made. All right, so we want to get as much in the air at the one time as possible. So it's best to pair off. Yeah. Katie, you want to I find hearts is, was a symbol. That's something that we always, we always did hearts and XOXO. And I find hearts in a piece of dust, a rock, a, a, a rain splash. I opened my door one day to get in, it was raining, and when I shut it, there was a raindrop had fallen on my door in perfect shape of a heart. I had a tea stain in my cup the other day, and uh, when I picked it up, I was going to put it in the dishwasher. Perfect heart in the center of it. 
Uh, she sends me dimes, uh, feathers. Uh, I hear her name constantly, or I see her name constantly written. I had a dream the other night that I was in a room and she came to me in my sleep. I don't know if this happened or if I was just dreaming. She came to me in that room and she hugged me and she asked me how I was and I told her I wasn't doing well. And she said, listen, I know this is hard. I know you miss me and I miss you too, but you gotta be strong. You gotta get through this and I know you can. So that's probably the best advice is what I can give to anyone. For the family of Hannah Thorne, it is the end of a painful chapter. The justice system is no walk in the park for the victims. I can tell you that is very stressful. Today, Justice William Goodridge found Mercer guilty on three charges, street racing causing death, street racing causing bodily harm, and a breach of probation. It's hard to look at him in the face and just to see no reaction, no remorse, just looking at the floor or in the space, whatever's on his mind, but it don't seem like he's got any regrets. I guess it's time for us to start healing now. In two and a half years of uh, battling the uh, justice system and I'm just glad it's over. Just glad it's over again. We can probably finally start to heal now as a family and, and a group. All of Hannah's friends are here again today. It's been very hard on them as well. Young girls having to go through what they've gone through. Here she goes. Uh, they say you die twice and the last time somebody says your name and I want Hannah's name to continue to be said many, many years from now. So we had a, we have a playhouse, Hannah and Cody had a playhouse, which is still out there and um, homemade swings and they spent many, many hours out there. So I wanted uh, something that would reflect both of them in their childhood. So that's where that came from. They sat on a swing many times together. Since last we met, tell me everything that's going on. I know there's been a lot with the court dates or anything going through court. Again, Steve and Mercer are still incarcerated and the guy that killed her, Brian King, he's out of jail. Nine months was all Brian King. Um, served, incarcerated, nine months, and then two months of uh, day parole and then full parole. It's a joke. Again, you just have to accept it and uh, fight on for changes. You don't get over it. Uh, it takes a little piece away. Yeah. It's like you lose, I feel like I lost a piece of my childhood. Yeah. Not a moment goes by that I don't think about her. She's always on my mind, or every, every time something happens, I'm like, oh, what would Hannah say? I remember praying that one day, I didn't want to forget her, but I remember praying one day I'd wake up and it wouldn't be the first thing I think about, that this day wouldn't be what consumed my memories of Hannah, how she died, because there was 18 years before that one day. And all these memories, all these photos around my head was, was just, wasn't bringing happy memories at the time. So I had to pack them away and now I'm much more happy just trying to remember the happy times. There's no, uh, there's no holidays here. We don't celebrate anything. We don't celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate Mother's Day. It's hard to be happy. It's hard to celebrate. Um, when part of us are not here. Our, our link is broken and it's not just Hannah died that day, many other people died with her. I'm a changed person, I will never be the same. I'm very rarely happy, very rarely smile, all because somebody wanted to have a bit of fun driving their vehicles the way that these two did. Whew. 
I, I don't like crying at all. How could I? How could I not? Gail has been, I think, to all of us, the definition of strength since Hannah has passed. Um, she's done everything she can to make sure Hannah's never forgotten and that what happened to them is not going to happen to any other family. Well, she's amazing. I don't know how she gets through everything. She's, uh, it's unbelievable mm -hmm. what she goes through. Yeah. And she still has a smile on her face every time you see her. And she's always so glad to see all of us and everything. To speak about Hannah, speak about the foundation, to speak of how she was killed, um, definitely helps me carry on uh, from day to day. It's, I, I guess it's, my mission and I'll take it as my job right now <laughs> is to spread the word and uh, keep Hannah's memory alive. Gail's ability to continuously advocate to stand up there, I, I don't know if I will be able to do it, but she's found the strength and she's, she's doing it and she's making change in the name of Hannah. Well, good afternoon everybody and I'll thank you in advance for listening. I think it's, it's really important to have someone like Gail come in um, and it's important because uh, I think the, having the, a real live message, real experience to share uh, with the kids, uh, it's quite, um, it, it dr certainly drives the message home, the importance of it. We've existed uh, for a, uh, since the mid 50s, uh, there's, two, there's two pieces to uh, uh, our program. One is the advocacy work that we do um, and uh, education and so on. The other portion is teaching uh, safety training, traffic safety, occupational health and safety and community safety programs. We started a foundation in Hannah's memory because uh, of course Hannah was only 18 and uh, I know she was put here for uh, more than that. So Sometimes it's very emotional. Uh, for the kids and, and the responses we've had from uh, the feedback from uh, the, the students in classes. Uh, I think she's been certainly very, um, the kids certainly have responded to it in, in a fashion that I think they understood and hopefully, uh, you know, when, once they get behind the wheel they will understand the importance of it. So we're going to take Guys. a break here for a couple of minutes. Don't forget uh, if you can. Yeah, you we'll just leave it here. Our son is, um, he's slowly but surely feeling better, but again, won't, uh, he'll never get over the loss of uh, his sister. Uh, he was never supposed to be an only child, and right now he's an only child. They were best friends, like, they were texting all the time. I remember Hannah would be like, hold on, I gotta call Cody. Like, they were always, they were so, I've never seen a brother, like, I'm close with my brother, but, like, nothing compared to what Hannah and Cody was. They grew up close. They were each other's best friend. Cody was Hannah's keeper. We used to joke, but it was actually, Hannah was Cody's keeper. She'd always watch out for her brother. They were very close. He doesn't come out very often, and again, it's hard for him to come home because Hannah's not here. Um, this Christmas was the first Christmas that he came home, um, but he came Christmas Eve and found himself having to leave at Boxing Day. Um, so he, he has a hard time coming home. Home is not the same anymore. My name's Cody Thorne, and I'm Hannah's brother. How, uh, how close were you and Hannah growing up? Uh, we, we were best friends. I spent every day together, every moment. When I wasn't like in school, I was hanging out with her. She was my like glue. Always, what comes to my mind is how like, controlling she was over me. When we, one time we were playing outside, um, could I? Just, I don't remember exactly what game it was, but it was just out, outside playing in the snowbanks and sliding and stuff like that. 
and I wanted to go in because we were after for hours and I was getting cold but she screeched and bawled to get her way and I stayed out for another like hour or so and then I wanted to go in again and she started again and I stayed out once more and then that was enough then after I stopped and then when she came in she's like mom I know how I get my way with Cody all I gotta do is cry and that's from then on forward <laughs> Life has changed so much since, like, it's hard to even reminisce the, what it was like back then, <laughs> really. Who are you gonna call, like, to talk about family stuff and every, like, everything that has to do with, like, mom and dad has been, it's all on me now. Uh, all I want really is a hug. <laughs> That'd be it. <laughs> Nothing that words could, could do. <laughs> Does it ever get easier? Never. No. It. Uh, I, I can't believe it's been four years, actually. Um, it just seems like it was yesterday. We've had quite a number of changes to the Highway Traffic Act. So now, um, if you do something like Brian King, Stephen Mercer did, you lose your license automatically, uh, suspended for seven days, and you know your vehicle and things like that. Um, there's been some changes to the Fatalities Act. Um, we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Hannah at all. They um, took her from the crash, brought her to the hospital, pronounced her dead, and then immediately took her to St. John's. Uh, we were not um, contacted in any shape, way, or form by a doctor, nurse, uh, anybody from the coroner's office. They just basically did what they did. We had no rights. And um, that really haunts me that uh, I didn't have a right to hug my daughter or be with my daughter in the hours of her death. And uh, we should have had that choice, and that that will that is also being changed. Many many changes to the Highway Traffic Act, and again, I'd like to think that we were a contributor to all of them. I've um, I've had some advice said to me, you know, and there's the hold on to your memories, but it's the memories that you remember that are so upsetting. Another one I had uh, somebody say to me. Well, at least you have some. My reply to her, and I just well tell you, my reply was, you tell me which one of your children you could live without. Even though I know people mean well, you know, there's cliches, you know, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. I won't be fine. But I just, the best advice I can tell somebody is none. None. You can't change me. Nothing can change. Words can't change how I feel. So it's just best leave me be and let me have whatever I need to go through. Every year from now on, this is what's gonna happen. Yeah, basically. I'll always be there over on my knees, plant flowers if I got to. Someone will push me over. I learned the hard way to not take life for granted and to tell the people that you love that you love them every chance you get because you don't know when the last time is going to be the last time. You got to live every day to your fullest like it could be your last and uh, even like your loved ones and friends treat that moment like you could never see them again because you, do, you never know what could happen, and every moment should just be cherished. I would like Hannah to be remembered as someone everybody knows that she was very loved. She was funny. Uh, she had a wicked sense of humor the night before she was killed. She had myself and her father stitches laughing before she went out. I cried. She, I laughed so much at her. She was very funny. She was sweet kind, good friend, very well loved. It's the love I have for Hannah is what keeps me going. 
and starting the foundation is something that I've relied on, actually, for my crotch to try to help me move forward and to keep Hannah's memory alive. Um, I don't want, I want everybody to remember Hannah. I don't want Hannah's death to be in vain. Um, this is real life. You can't take this back. Most of the crashes are caused by human error, as Hannah's was. They broke so many rules. All you have to do is obey the rules, obey the laws, the speeds. Everybody would be fine. It's not worth that extra three minutes of you getting there or your speed kick for the day to have somebody take somebody's life or yours. There's somebody waiting for you as well at home. Possibly a wife, a children, mother, father. But most often people don't think of that. But just obey the rules, drive safe, take your time, sit back, enjoy our beautiful province. Hannah, you are missed terribly. You are missed terribly by many. I just didn't lose a daughter that day. I lost a friend and a companion. And you were a good one. You were my sidekick, my right arm. I will continue the work, Hannah. Our mission is not done. I will continue our fight until there's no more deaths due to highway traffic crashes. I love you, darling. Love you forever. Miss you always.